Right, it's time for another kit build. I haven't done one of these in quite a while, and I saw this little SMD soldering practice board on eBay, and I thought it would be fun to construct. And I've had to spend some time finding the instructions for this, so hopefully people will be able to use my video here as a guide for actually building the thing. Now, these columns here on the outsides are just meant for the actual pro soldering practice. There's no electrical connections on this side. It's just so that you can practice hand soldering the um, small components. But I'm actually not going to do that because I kind of want to just keep those components um, in case I need them for other things. So we're going to focus on the center section here, which is actually a little bit of a light show using a uh, CD4017 decade counter, a 555 timer, and some other stuff. So we're going to go ahead and start with some of the components in the center here. So we've got R48 and 49. Uh, R48 is supposed to be a 10k resistor, so we're gonna look through our resistors here until we find a 103 which is 10k we'll just kind of tip that out there and I should probably find my oh I just made a huge mess um, I should find my tweezers bear with me a moment here should be. I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video while I find my tweezers. I'll be right back. All right, I found these, which are probably slightly overkill, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, I also need my little copper spongy thing, which I have off, off screen here. So let's go ahead and make sure the soldering iron is up to temperature. Yep. All right, so R48, which is this one right here, this is how we're going to do this. We're going to flow a little bit of solder onto the pad, just like that. And then we'll grab the component here with the tweezers. Uh, carefully. It's been a while since I've done surface mount. There we go. And you'll just melt one side of that blob of solder that we put on and then put the component into it and then flow some solder on the other side and we're good to go. And that's how you hand solder a surface mount component. All right, so the next one is R49. R49 is supposed to be two meg. I think that's these ones right here. So we've got 225, which is this 2, 2, and then 5, 0. So that's actually 2.2 meg, but it's close enough. So we're going to fight with the plastic wrap on this thing for a moment. There we go. All right, so there's the 2 meg resistor. Come on, flip over. There we go. All right. So following the same procedure, we'll just... Am I in shot here? I'm really not. I'm going to shift this a little bit so that'll be in shot. There we go. All right. Make sure I'm not getting my head in the way either. All right. So again, flow a little, little dab of solder onto the pad there. It's a little bit sticky, so we'll put a tiny bit of flux on. And we'll grab very carefully the resistor here. There we go. And then flow the solder on 
to the other side. All right, now I need C27. Now C27 and 28 say that they're 0.1 micro. I have no idea what the values of these capacitors are, and I don't know if my multimeter is going to be sensitive enough. Pardon me a moment. I have a big piece of tape stuck to my foot. There we go. I don't know if my multimeter is going to be sensitive enough to see what these capacitors are, but let's go ahead and give it a try. So we'll set it to the capacitance and then peel the plastic back. Mitch is being difficult as usual. There we go. We'll tip one of those out onto the board here. And let's see if we can get a reading. Oops. Oh boy. I just pinged that uh, capacitor off into the distance here. I heard it land. Um, oh boy. Oops. Thanks. Be careful about bumping the power supply for the LEDs there. That was less than ideal. Um, well, I have no idea where, oh, there it is. Perfect. Oop, come back here. All right. Oh, what is going on with my lights? Okay, there we go. All right, so we know now that those are 0.1 micro or 100 nano. So C27. We'll go ahead and flow some solder onto the pad and repeat the process. Of course, the solder isn't wanting to grab onto that capacitor there. That's a little annoying. Let's try again. Okay, now I'm just getting the capacitor stuck to the tweezers here with flux. That's less than ideal. Well, it's not the most beautiful soldering job I've ever done with the surface mount component, but it'll have to do. Alright, and then we'll... Now this capacitor just is not taking solder very well. There, I think I finally got the solder to flow onto it. On one side, at least. Oh, this is being very recalcitrant.
Okay, there we go. Alright, so there's C27. Now we've got R50, 61, 62, 63, and 64. So R50 to R60 is 470 ohms. So 50... It's going to be the 470 ohm. Uh, I believe that's these here. Yep. So we need a 470 ohm resistor. Keep getting them flipped over. There we go. All right. Repeating the process. So R50 is 470. Alright, and we'll grab the component with the tweezers again. There we go. That one went on a lot nicer than that capacitor did. Alright, R61 through 64 are 10k resistors, so I think that's back to these. And yeah, 103, so I need four of those. One, two, three, four. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and apply solder to the first pads of all four of those. All right. Now, if you do this well, the solder just kind of sucks the component into place. There we go. that one up. Alright. And then one more. There we go. That's good enough. And that one is really crooked, isn't it? Just quickly touch a little bit of solder off onto the other sides of these resistors. And there we go. So there's our 61 through 64. Now C28 is another 0.1 micro, so let's grab one of them. Hopefully this one will be a little more cooperative with the soldering. So we'll go ahead and... Actually, I'm going to go ahead and flow solder onto the first pads of all of these just real quick while I'm here. There we go. All right. Now, will you be a little more cooperative this time, Mr. Capacitor? It's a, still kind of a dry solder joint there. Oh, this just not wanting to take solder at all. There we go. Alright, now coax the solder onto the other side is being very difficult about. There we go. I think I got it. Let's see. 
Yeah, I don't know why, but that's just being really difficult about soldering. All right, so D1 um, is a red LED, which I believe are these ones. Must be maybe a power indicator LED. All right. So let's fight with the plastic here for a bit. There we go. Oops. Now, if I'm not mistaken, the negative side of the diode is denoted by that green line. We can test that with the multimeter. seem to work. Hmm. All right, let's try this other way. That's not working either. Hmm. I think I'm going to have to quickly make a rig to test this diode with. I'll be right back. All right, we're back, and I made a quick jig to test, you know, to make sure that I get the polarity on these diodes correctly. There's just little two pieces of uh, wire there, um, and don't care about it not being calibrated. So I've just got the LED wedge between two pieces of wire. You can see it blink there a little bit. And we've got pin two is the cathode. So the second pin is the cathode. So that's interesting. That's backwards from what I would have thought. Just going to double check that one more time. All right, so on the bottom of this, there's a little green T shape, and the long line of the T is actually the positive lead of the LED, which is backwards from what I would have thought. But on the front of the LED, um, I'm just going to have to describe this because I don't have my microscope set up in the moment. There's a very faint green mark on the negative side of the LED. So I'm thinking and hoping that the thick side here is the negative pin of the LED. So if we just very carefully there we go that should do the trick all right now these next set of diodes d1 d12 13 14 and 15 are going to be these um, little 1N4148 signal diodes. Now these are interesting because they're actually cylindrical diodes that just have, instead of like leads that you would expect on a normal diode, they're just little cylinders with metal caps on the end. Now bear with me while I struggle with opening this packaging again. I may have to resort to using a knife for this one. Oh, no, I think I got it. Yep, there we go. Alrighty. 
This is one of the most complicated surface mount projects I've ever done. All right, so we've actually got a diagram on the board here of which side is the negative, and thankfully the, LED, or the diodes themselves are also very clearly marked. They've got their little black stripe marking negative. So those will be nice and easy to just quickly bang onto the board here. Oh, that one's a little crooked, but that's all right. There we go. That's a little cleaner. All right, and then we'll just bang some solder out onto the other sides. So normally this is supposed to be done by machine. And there's solder paste involved and all sorts of other things, but sometimes especially in quality control, you find yourself having to touch up surface mount components by hand. So while this isn't a hugely useful skill for just normal everyday people, um, it's handy for quality control techs and such. All right, so I think we're starting to run a little bit long, so um, I'm going to go ahead and call this part here. Uh, we'll just pick up right away in, in a new video, so uh, stay tuned for part two. If you haven't already, consider clicking here to subscribe. Over here will be a video that YouTube thinks you'll find interesting based on your watching habits. Right here is going to be the kit builds playlist, and right here is a Patreon link that you can use to help fund more kit builds and projects like this. Thanks so much.